So what about the domain for this one? Remember, domain is what x values are getting covered by the graph. So this arrow keeps going outward and to the left, and this arrow keeps going outward and to the right. And in between, all of those x values map to something on my function. So what do you think the domain is? Oh, real numbers! You can use the fancy R. You can use ARN. Or if you want to use interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. Make sure if you are using interval notation that you know the difference between brackets and parentheses. We will use parentheses always with negative infinity and infinity. Now my range is also all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. So I don't care which way you want to express your domain and range, either inequalities or interval notation. Just make sure that you are completely confident with that method for the test. So folks, that is our linear function. Any questions there? All right, let's go ahead and look at our absolute value function. So what does an absolute value function look like shape-wise? V absolute value graphs look like a V. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw little arrows on the V part of absolute value because it's important that you not only know how to generate the tables but also what the shapes of those graphs are. So what are we going to use for the inputs? Negative 1, 0, and 1 again. Now our parent function for this one is going to be Y equals the absolute value of x, our little washing machine function. What happens when I throw negative 1 into the washing machine? We get 1, a positive 1. When we plug in 0, we get 0. When we plug in 1, we get 1. So as long as you know what the equation looks like, you can use the negative 1, 0, and 1 inputs to find the y values associated with that function. Folks, what's the one function that we don't get to use negative 1, 0, and 1 for? Square roots. Those are the nasty ones. We'll get to that at the bottom of this page. So, folks, if I go to plot these points, backward 1, up 1, 0, 0, there's my vertex. Forward 1, up 1, there's my V. Now, our domain for this one, this arrow keeps going outward and to the left. This arrow keeps going outward and to the right. What's my domain if all of those x values are getting covered? All real numbers again. So r or negative infinity to infinity. Now, is my range going to be all real numbers? No, because if I look at my y-axis, I'm not getting any of these negative y-values. Nowhere here or here or here are we mapping to something that's on the graph. What's the first y-value that I get from the bottom up? Zero. And since we're covered going up from zero, we would say that our y-values are what than zero? Greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, what is it? Greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to because it's going up and equal to because zero, zero, that point I'm actually getting on that graph. Using interval notation, we would use a bracket at zero. Oop, let's do that over here. Bracket at zero to infinity. So bracket for the zero, parentheses for the infinity. On your own, I want you to try to do the quadratic and the cubic. Or actually, just the quadratic. Try to do the quadratic in two minutes. What's the parent equation look like? What's the parent table look like? The parent graph and domain and range if you can. Two minutes. I'll set a timer.
Folks, let's go ahead and do a quick check-in. So the equation is y equals x squared. That's what makes it a quadratic. And folks, what does a quadratic look like? A parabola or a u. And this is important because when you make your parent table for this, same inputs as the other ones, negative 1, 0, and 1, and the outputs are exactly the same as what we got for the absolute value function. So it's not enough just to get the points and connect the dots. We got to note that these connect going straight out through the vertex and the other two points, whereas the quadratic will curve outward. Now, if let's say it's the test and you're freaking out and you're like, oh my gosh, I know one of them's a V and I know one of them's a U, but I don't remember which one. You can always plug in another point. So let's just plug in two and two squared is four. So if I plug in this other point, four or two of one, two, three, four, can I connect a straight line going through those and through that one? No. So that would be your gentle reminder that this graph should be a U which curves through those points instead of going straight out like the absolute value graph. So try not to make it look too pointy and try to make it look like a U. Your domain for this one is all real numbers. It goes all the way left and all the way right. So negative infinity to infinity. And the range starts at zero and is covered going up. So y greater than or equal to zero or bracket zero infinity. So folks, what I want you to notice so far is that all three of these have a domain of all real numbers. Domain of all real numbers for all three. This range is all real numbers. And these two ranges are exactly the same. So the functions that have a vertex at 0, 0, and the arrows only go, go up in one direction, have the same range. So if you aren't sure what the domain is, what should you probably guess? All real numbers. Range, look at the graph, see if it's covered in the negative region, and if it's not, it starts at 0, covered going up. So let's see what we did with the, what we do with the cubic function. First, the parent equation is y equals x cubed. Can I use the same input points? Negative 1, 0, and 1. Negative 1, 0, and 1. What happens when I cube negative 1? We get negative 1. What happens when I cube 0? We get 0. What happens when I cube 1? Or 1 times 1 times 1, we get 1. So when I plot these points, uh-oh, what does this look exactly the same as? A line. Should we just connect the dots and go, yup, it's a line? No. no, it's a cubic function. So we do need to know roughly what the shapes of these graphs look like. So a cubic curves up through the right side and curves down through the left side around that central point, zero, zero. Folks, knowing the general shape and what the parent graph looks like is important for identifying the transformations. So for example, if I had a cubic function that was So if I had a, oh, and that's not a whiteboard marker. That was a close one. So if we had a cubic function going like this, does it look like that's been vertically reflected? Yep because this segment has moved down there and that segment has moved up there. So on those transformation problems, we do need to make sure that we know what the general shape is. So as long as you can generate those three points and know that it curves from the center point on bo in both directions, you'll be good to go on that cubic function. So what about the domain for this one? Anyone want to take a guess? It's all real numbers. This is going to keep going outward and to the left. This is going to keep going outward and to the right. So all the x values on that x-axis are going to get covered. So 
negative infinity to infinity, or the fancy R. What about the range? What y values are getting covered if this graph goes all the way down and all the way up? All real numbers as well. 